my parents are Ghanaians, first of all. And um, my dad is a shanty, my mom is gone. And, um, you know, um, I've literally lived in UK my whole life. I schooled in Ghana and then after secondary school, went back to the UK. Um, but for over 28 years, I've had a plan. I've had a master plan of where I have to be and I need to be. I, whilst I was writing little bits of um, tips to write down, I said something that actually struck me. I said, some people inherited legacies. Some of us have to create legacies to be inherited. You know, my story is very interesting where my grandfather is one of the fathers of high life music, folk high life music in Ghana. Um, but he died even before my father was born. So my father grew up hearing about his father and um, that made life very difficult for him because he never had a father to guide him. He was born out of wedlock and was transported to his grandmother um, to take care of him because he was the odd one out. My father doesn't know his father's parents or his father's brothers or siblings. And here it is, a man carrying another man called Sonny Badu, who's gonna inherit the gift of his father that was music. And so I knew that starting my journey I needed the voice of my grandfather to be heard again, even though the whole world never knows about him. Now today I can live talking about him and telling the world the songs that my grandfather wrote. Um, living in England, I, I kind of knew that I wanted to get into ministry. My father is a pastor in Ghana, um, and he once told me that I will become a pastor. In fact, when he said it, I almost argued with him I said, don't, don't give me that. Don't tell me that I'm not interested. Um, but I've grown up in the church. I've lived my whole life as a PK, as a pastor's kid. Um, so I end up in England and life starts. Life starts. Here you are finishing secondary school. I, went, I now went to Lewisham College in England. And then I have this urge of pursuing ministry, yet I don't have anyone to hold my hands or anyone to help me. And all I have around me is people who would abuse my gift. So it was a very tough, tough period where uh, I was working in Boots Pharmacy and I was also min working in about five churches per Sunday where I knew I was being abused. I knew um, I was being taken for granted, but I knew about long suffering and I was willing to go through every process without compromise because I knew that one day, anybody or everyone that looked down on me will one day say, I know him or I knew him and they might either be able to come close to me or point hands from a distance i knew it i i knew it. it it was it was a very tough season where i from this church i'd have to run to this church to that church and sometimes what you've done is is worth so much but you're giving just 20 pounds to 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 survive and and i was trained by my father not to argue or talk about money or or discuss money and whatever they give you, you say God bless you and you walk away. And then you're left struggling for the whole week as a student. Um, you, you, you're literally praying for where the next daily bread would come from. And it was a very tough season. I didn't want my mother to really know what I was going on. Imagine being a mother who loves your son and you, you, you really want the best for your son, but you know that You've done what you need to do and they have to carry on with life. And I have to always say, I'm doing fine. Everything is fine, but I'm not doing okay. And I'm, I don't want my mother to panic because I'm her only son, you know. And life was really, really tough. 
it got to a time um, I, I, I gave my whole time to a church. Now, I, I believe I can be very real here so people yeah. can learn from all of this. I, I gave my whole life to a church. The pastor told me, leave um, your work. Come, I'm going to take care of you. I, I'm going to match up what you get. I need your giftings. I need to work with you. Mom, I did that. And I wasn't even... I didn't even need anything. I just wanted my accommodation to be taken care of. First three months, they started doing it. Final, well, later on they stopped and I became homeless. I was now sleeping in cars. I remember one time I cried in a car. It was a Vauxhall, red Vauxhall um, in Streatham. I was weeping and asking God, what is this whole thing about it was raining so bad in the car no food in streatham highway i parked the car because the car didn't have a wiper so you and it didn't have an insurance um and, and and it was those times that you were sing in church and beg not for the service to close not because you want to go home you just don't have anywhere to go and you just want to be in god's presence Little did I know that in that period, God was molding me. God was shaping me. God was teaching me to endure the test of time. It got to a time as a young man, there was a young girl that I fell in love with. Um, and I remember she was studying medicine then. And the parents looked at me, you know, the, the mother sized me up and down and said, what do you have to offer our child um, mom the mo there was nothing as hurtful as being accused of something you're not you know it, it's, they accused me of a criminal who was destroying the girl's life and yeah, this is the interesting part of the story um, the church the girl attended was a word based church in fact if you go there you gotta know the word so I was so in love with this girl that I started learning the word back to back because I did not want any man to intimidate me. Mom, guess what? This is how I know the word back to back. So every stage from the pit to the prison, there is a lesson to learn there. So when I'm teaching now and I'm writing songs, if you listen to my songs, they are biblically based. They are Bible-based songs. I don't, I don't write and songs to entertain. You can literally read it scripture to scripture. It was because of that story. Today, today, God has blessed me with a beautiful wife and five beautiful children, and I am so blessed. I sit back to say, God, I didn't know you would honor me this way. I am so grateful. I, 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 uh, when I'm praising and dancing and jumping in the rain, people don't understand. You know, this Sunday I preached a message titled, It's Between God and I. There are some testimonies you, you can't share to people. Oh. There's some, some things people wouldn't understand. You know, that, that year though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, that period where you know that God literally picked you out. So when I'm jumping, when I'm shouting, when I'm screaming, permit me to do it. This praise is between God and I. And, and, and mom, I've, I've been, I've been, I was the rejected one. I was the one that nobody it will anything good come out of nazareth it was me it was my story nothing i listen in school i was not the best i was not the one that mommy will come and say i'm proud of you in fact when mom got to the room and you know you have to check first second third fourth fifth um no mommy will start checking from last because what i realized later on growing was my way of learning was very different from mm. others. And African parents didn't have the time to learn all of these things. So I was just not doing well in school. And, and so to be able to write 50 books, 
to be able to be doing what I've done. I look at my son and I tell my son, you have a big shoe to fill, but I'll hold your hands to fill it and beyond because what I've been through in life is what has shaped me to be what I am. I've survived Europe, I've survived Africa, I've survived in America, not because of anything, because of the process that God took me through and that's the problem with this new generation mama they don't want to go through process they think you just got to get up get a social media account and start talking and making noise recently i've seen some young men who just started um, going on holidays and then they'll picture and video themselves on holiday boats and they just started ministry you are on holiday already i have not taken a break if I'm taking a break, it's with my wife and family. I, I I have not. You see, some of them are getting this whole thing wrong. Raquel, for me, is just God's gift to me um, after being faithful. Ten years ago, I knew that the calling would follow me. And what people didn't know was that ten years back, um, what I'm doing now was what I've been doing. I just didn't want the world to know me as a preacher yet because of the mindset of people especially Africans ah is he not a singer why is he preaching and that could close a lot of my doors but what people didn't know is that I was preaching more than I was singing and um, reverse back in London God gave me that song open the floodgate in a very 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 struggling season of my life where it was all over it was all over then i asked god to just give me one song because lino peterson had told me that lino peterson said sonny all you need is one song like i wrote peace when troubles blow jehovah sees jehovah knows he said like i wrote that all you need is that one song that will change your life so in my struggling period one day many years ago about 19 years ago dr ron Kenoli came to kicc and i was standing in the crowd this man was up there on stage i had received prophecies that i'll be like him one day but i didn't know how i would so whilst he was singing i managed to stand at the front and i told him they said i'll be like you one day then he said ah i said they they said i'll be like you one day he reached down and laid hands on me that was all i needed that that's why when i'm live in the stadiums i go to lay hands on people because that's what turned my life around I couldn't get the time to book an appointment with him because I was nobody then. That hand laying, I grabbed onto it and I held onto God. Like the woman with the issue of blood who will hold onto the hem of his garment. Guess what? When I started filling stadiums, guess who I bring to the stadiums in Ghana? Dr. Ron Kimoni. And I reminded him, sir, this is what you said and this is what it is. And he blessed me. In fact, at that time, he said, Dr. Badu, should I die in West Africa? I want you to bury me. And that was horrible oh. for me, you know. Um, and so I love to encounter people. I love to lay pray for people. I love to 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 say a word of encouragement in their life because that's what Ron Kenoli did for me. And today, Africa celebrates me. My family celebrates me. My church celebrates me. And my mother and my father are so proud of me. And it's very humbling.